So good to have you with us again in this next part of our lesson. Uh, we are talking about uh, the nations of the earth represented in the book of Daniel chapter 7. Uh, we're also talking quite a bit about America and America in the Bible, which is a part of these nations that we're talking about. And so we're going to pick up in Revelation 17 and 12. It says, And the ten horns which thou saw are the ten kings which have received no kingdom as yet, but receive power as kings one hour with the beast. Remember we, we mentioned about one hour is a figure of speech, meaning that it won't last long because there's a short period of time from the time that the Antichrist is, is, is revealed. We know, as he, we know that he'll be revealed at the abomination of desolation. We know that, the, that, that that's when Israel will realize that they have been duped. <laughs> and so the three and a half years and then the seventh trumpet judgment. And we talked about how that the stone would strike the image that uh, Nebuchadnezzar saw. And, it, and, and so that stone crumbles human government, brings human government down. All the nations of the earth and Jesus Christ will reign forever again who is this beast here that we just spoke about the antichrist which will be the last world dictator that's what we're talking about these 10 kings will give their power to the antichrist when the bible uses the word one hour as i said earlier it is a figure of speech it means they will receive power as kings for a very short time. These are true blue globalists who will back the end time world leader. The Bible says these have one mind. Doesn't it sound familiar? They have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. So these global leaders of these 10 nations will, will be willing to give their power and authority to the beast. Something will trigger that. It looks very likely that that thing that's going to trigger that would be the sixth trumpet judgment. Lots of people, the Bible talks about, remember we talked about the sixth trumpet judgment where a third of the earth or, or the third of mankind would be killed and a third comes to what uh, 1.63 billion people we talked about there's going to be such a large number of people that will that will die from from in fact this is the next trumpet to fall the next judgment to fall from this sixth trumpet judgment there'll be such a death toll that they will be willing people will be willing to do whatever it takes to make peace now we're going to talk about world war one and world war two but there's some similarities there because in world war one they tried to bring about the, the this new world order system under roosevelt and then it fell that was after World War I, then World War II came along, we had a much higher number of death toll, and that's where they succeeded in bringing about the, big, the establishment of this new world government. So under the Second World War, they were able to succeed in what they could not succeed in under World War I. So we're going to see something similar to that, I believe, play out in this end time scenario. So, these again, these ten king, these ten rulers will follow the world dictator all the way to the seventh trumpet. The reason we know this is because the scriptures go on to say, "These shall make war with the Lamb." Who's the Lamb? We know that the Lamb is Jesus Christ, and it says, "And the Lamb shall overcome them, for He is Lord of lords." And king of kings so we know that these ten horn nations 
will be on the earth during the seventh trumpet judgment and will fight against Jesus Christ in the battle of Armageddon, which is at the seventh trumpet. The Bible lets us know that when the Lamb comes to fight against the Antichrist and the armies of the world, he will have people with him. There will be an army. Revelation 17, 14 says, And they that are with him are what? They are called, they're chosen, and they're faithful. These are his saints, which are all those who are born again believers that obey the true gospel according to the scriptures. These are the people that are going to be with him and willing to stand with him. Again, notice what Revelation 17 4 says. And they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. They are those who are called, chosen, and faithful. These are those who are careful to follow His word. Remember the lessons that we talked about on the parable of the sower. These people had the word of God fall on good ground. Remember we talked about the stony places and the, you know, and, and, uh, and, and uh, those who, uh, you know, the, I forget what, what it was called, the, the thorns that were choked by the thorns and all of these things that, that corrupted the ground, but it was those that fell on good ground that was able to overcome and, 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 and be what God accepted. They were born again of what? The water and spirit, baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of their sins. These are the people. These are, these are not people who follow false Christianity, but people who know their God. Remember Jesus told the Samaritan woman at the well. You remember that? And he said there's coming a time when the true worshipers will come. So you mean there's some false worshipers? He says remember there's coming a time when the true worshipers will come and they will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Again. And they that are with him are called they're chosen and they're faithful. The Bible says time and chance happen to them all. While all are called, all are not chosen. Everybody, everybody's not going to be chosen just because they're called. The Bible says many are called, but few are chosen, in fact. Again, go back to the parable of the sower. When the seed or word came, to them what was the condition of their heart because that's what that's what he was that was the that was the core foundation of what Jesus was talking about in the parable some seed found its way to the wayside some seed found its way to stony places while all are called few are chosen because few receive seed on the good ground some asked what's the difference between being called or being chosen some believe this is the same no it's not remember those parables Jesus taught he had a marriage feast and invited his people remember that one said I can't come I just took a wife Another said, I can't come. I purchased some land or I got a business. My father died. I've got to bury my father. Jesus said, let the dead bury the dead. Everyone had an excuse not to attend this invitation. When, we're, when we are called, that's when we decide to follow. 
Not talking about following false Christianity. I'm talking about following truth when it is revealed to us through the revelation of Scripture. When the Word of God comes to us and we reject it, we become unfaithful to His Word. If we're not faithful to His Word, we're not faithful to Him. He is coming for the called. He's coming for the chosen. And He's coming for the faithful. So let's go back to the image of Daniel what he saw in the dream in Daniel chapter 2. Remember we talked about that, that image. There was a head of gold. There was arms and breast of silver. There's a belly of thigh and brass. Legs of iron. Feet of iron mingled with clay. Remember we talked about what all that represented. Now the feet of iron mingled with clay represents the holy... Roman Empire. The legs of iron represent the Roman Empire. The feet mingled with clay depict the Holy Roman Empire started in AD, in 800 AD. But notice the ten toes, which are the ten kingdoms, are also mingled with iron and clay. Those toes are also mingled with the iron and clay. So Daniel in chapter 2, verse 42 says, Tell us. It tells us that the ten toes of this image are the ten kingdoms which are partly strong and partly fragile is what it says in the New King James Version. These ten kingdoms are the same as Daniel chapter 7 that are represented as the ten horns on the beast. Remember, each head represents a king and his kingdom. Verse 44 says, And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom. So at the same time that these kings are on the scene, Jesus Christ is going to come. And he's going to set up his kingdom. Again, remember the stone in verse 45 that was cut out of the mountain without hands, the Bible said, and it strikes the image and destroys this image. You remember it rolls down and it strikes the image. This is the same event, as I said before, as Revelation concerning the seventh trumpet judgment. When the armies of the earth fight against Jesus Christ, which ushers in what is called the wrath of God. This is also, <clears throat> now I want us to keep this in mind, this is also the vile judgments poured out, which the Bible calls the wrath of God. See, at the seventh trumpet judgment, this is when God's wrath comes. Satan had his time in the, in the first three and a half years. In this three and a half year period, this, I mean the second three and a half year period, uh, that's known as the Great Tribulation period. Satan has his wrath at this point. But then God's wrath will be at the seventh trumpet. His wrath is against these ten nations that are on the earth during this time. We want to identify these nations that give their power and authority to the beast or the Antichrist. Remember the Holy Roman Empire, which is this ten nation confederacy, has been in birth in the birth process. I wish I had a map where I could show you this, but I don't I don't have a map. But this ten nation Holy Roman Empire is the Europe which is the enlarging of the European Union. This is made up of Germany, France, and Italy. Most of the time in Europe, it has been a political leader and a religious leader, and they would consolidate their power. It is believed that the Holy Roman Empire ended, or they would share their power. 
it is believed that the Holy Roman Empire ended in 1806, which it did temporarily, but the Bible lets us know that it will be in existence in these last days. These 10 toes and 10 horns represent the power base of the Antichrist, this European power base. The Holy Roman Empire is being born right now. In 1957, it was called the common market. And now it's called the European Union, which started in 1993. 27 nations have joined together with 500 million people. They are, or at least were, at the time, totally unified economically. Now, with the coming of, I don't know if you remember the, uh, the coming of Brexit, and I'm not sure at this point where this stands right now, but we are watching, our, we're watching to see how this plays out. They have one money called the Euro, and as of this report, are soon to have a European president. This is where the Antichrist and false prophet will come from. Italy has always had both a political, remember we said this before, they have always had both a political and a religious leader. This is where the Vatican sits. Remember, it's illustrated in Revelation chapter 17. It talks about the harlot and the, and, uh, and, and the, and the seven uh, mountains or the seven hills. And so this land of seven hills is Rome, Italy. This is where the Vatican sits. This is why I always refer to Revelation 17. It talks about the Catholic cardinals' colors, the same colors that's used as the Catholic cardinals. And so we know that this is an organization that actually was responsible for the codification of the Trinitarian doctrine uh, and also baptizing in relational titles. All of this stuff came through the ecumenical councils of this, of this, uh, this Roman Catholic religious order. And so back to Daniel 7, 24, it says, and the ten horns out of this kingdom are ten kings, which shall arise, and another shall arise after them, and he shall be diverse from the first, and he shall subdue three kings. Daniel saw this one horn come up and uproot three of the kings. This is a special sign of identity of the Antichrist, for he shall come up and uproot three of these kings and be very great. And he'll be the Antichrist. Notice in verse 21 through 22, I beheld and the same horn made war, the same horn that rose up now and subdued the three kings. It says, I beheld in the same horn made war with the saints and prevailed against them. So this horn rises up and there's war going on during this three and a half year period. There's fighting going on. This is the great tribulation that Daniel's talking about. This is the things that the Bible said is sealed up to the end, to the end, and then it would be revealed to this generation. This is another proof pre-tribulation doctrine is wrong. Because if saints are taken out before the tribulation, how can he, the Antichrist, prevail over the saints? They're gone, right? Wrong or not. There's so many ways to prove pre-trib is incorrect. But this is just another proof. The Great Tribulation starts three and one half years before Jesus Christ returns. The Bible says the Antichrist prevailed against them till the Ancient of Days came. You remember that? 
And so the Ancient of Days refers to Jesus Christ. And he comes three and a half years after the starting of the Great Tribulation. Jesus Christ comes three and a half years after the abomination of desolation. So after this abomination of desolation time and the Antichrist is revealed, there's three and a half years and Jesus Christ comes back at this point. So the Antichrist revealed are prevailed, the Antichrist prevailed against the saints till Jesus Christ came, or the Ancient of Days came, and then judgment was given to the saints of the Most High. So we have a time of judgment. And then the time came that the saints possessed the kingdom. So the saints possess the kingdom. This everlasting kingdom. Remember, at the seventh trumpet, Jesus destroys human government. Human government is put down. Now there will be people during that time that will be coming through this thousand year millennial reign we talked about. After the seventh trumpet. But he puts down human government. So from the middle of the of the of Daniel's 70th week we which it marks the abomination of desolation to the seventh trumpet judgment the Antichrist will reign only during these last three and a half years and then he will be cast into the lake of fire with a false prophet then the kingdom will be given over to the saints of the Most High so the saints receive the kingdom. You remember the Bible talked about the saints being priests and kings. That's what the Bible says. And so the saints will operate and hold positions of authority during that millennial reign, that period of millennial reign. And so the Bible says in verse 23, he says, Thus he said, the fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon earth, which shall be diverse from all kingdoms and shall devour the whole earth. This is talking about that new world order system and shall tread it down and break it in pieces. And so this is the new world order, one world government system. This verse is the prophecy of a world government Remember, the image, this image that Daniel saw in chapter 2 represents all of the world governments in history. That the stone crushes, they crush, it crushes them all. All of those world governments are going to be annihilated, put forevermore behind us. Revelation chapter 13 also refers to this same world government and it will rise up out of Europe and it will devour the whole world the Bible says. So we can look to Europe to understand better the new world order. I, the new world order. I hear people say we're going to defeat the new world order. I hear that a lot. You know, I believe uh, Alex Jones has a program. He talks about defeating the New World Order. You know, that's talked about a lot. And, and, and I'm not trying to put people down uh, for saying that or feeling the way that they feel. But we have to recognize that if we believe the Word of God, if we believe the Bible, these things are, it's not us that's going to put the world, the New World Order down. God will do it himself. God will. This world government will come into existence because the Bible says it will and it will devour. The Bible says it will devour the whole earth. Now, this word devour does not mean it will destroy the whole earth. 
but it will dominate it with the exception of some nations that will resist. The Bible does teach that there are, there are nations that will resist and not be a, a part of this. Now for, now for the good news, Daniel 7, 27, it says, and the kingdom and the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the most high. When will this happen? When the nations of the earth turn against Israel at the seventh trumpet. The Bible says in Zechariah chapter 14 and 2, I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle. Remember we talked about that. That's in Zechariah 14 and 2. So he will gather all nations at this seventh trumpet. He will gather all nations to battle. This is when Jesus Christ puts down all human government. He's not only going to put down all human government, he's going to put down all global religion. All global religion, all human government. Jesus Christ will reign supreme. These nations that give their power to the beast will be gathered together against Israel and Israel will have their back against the wall with no one to turn to. But God will show up when they pro probably when they need him the most. This will take place in the northern part of Israel with the Antichrist forces coming down from the north into Israel and Israel will keep fighting back. Iran and Russia will lead this fight against Israel. It will probably look like Israel will be wiped out till Jesus Christ comes on the scene. There will probably be soldiers of Israel looking toward the Mount of Olives. You remember what the Bible said about the Mount of Olives? praying for deliverance because that is where the scriptures say he will show up. The Bible says the Lord will descend with a shout 1 Thessalonians 4 and 16. Notice the word descend. He's coming down out of the heavens at the Mount of Olives to fight Israel to fight for Israel. If you study this fourth chapter you will see what this happens at this very time, the archangel blows that seventh trumpet. Paul writes there and lets us know. So with all of this, we wonder where does this leave us here in America? Where does America fit in all of this? Well, we're running out of time. So we're going to talk about America in our next uh, segment. And uh, we're going to go back and talk about America just for a while. Bring out some more about that. We're so glad that everybody uh, listened into this lesson. And we'll be looking forward to seeing you in our, uh, being with us in our next lesson.